But there you have it. We At this point, I mean, we have a game. We don't have a game over screen. But a game over screen is simply yet another level. You know, we'll call it level game over, right? You create a new scene. Uh, all right, file, new scene. And let's just put a, a nice, attractive GUI text in the middle of the screen. Game over. Boom. And let's make it nicely middle centered and a big, huge font of size, say 40. And save it as game over. And then if ever you run out of lives, well, first we're going to destroy ourselves. And then we're going to application.load level. I can't remember what I called it. I could just call it game over. Uh, with a capital O. Like that. And ooh, we don't want to play this scene. We want to play level one. Actually, let's start from, no, I guess we have to start from level one. And play. And let's just let this bounce three times and intentionally miss. Oh, it's a little slow. Actually. Oh, oh yeah. Like that. Dodge. That. Dodge. Game over couldn't be loaded because it hasn't been added to the build settings. Oh, but it was going to try. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but I can't look it up right this second. And this is also where you would actually build the actual software. For example, exporting the, the Windows standalone application or for the web player and so on, and then you can share it. But we have a game, guys. This is, this is it. We have, we have a, a literal game with a goal. Uh, there's no win. You just keep going until you can't go anymore. Um, so, you know, until you pass out, I suppose. Uh, you can increase the difficulty con continuously by doing things like changing the starting velocity of the ball, right? Every time you go up in a level, the ball, instead of launching at a 300, it launches at 300, then 350, then 450, and then so on and so forth, faster and faster and faster until it becomes virtually impossible to control. You can implement a variety of uh, power-ups simply by, well, we may want to look at that, um, simply to look at the collision rules. Um, it's worth discussing very briefly. So every object in the game has a layer, and they default to the, the default layer. But and, and all those things will collide with one another. But you may want to do objects that can only collide with certain other objects. For example, if we created some sort of power-up, right? Um, create other. Yeah, let's, let's go and implement a power-up. I thought we were done, but I have forgotten. Uh, you know what? A capsule looks kind of cool, kind of a pill type thing. Uh, we're going to zero it all out. It's obviously too big. Let's go half size in every way. There we go. Nice power up capsule. We're also going to rotate it around the z axis 90 degrees. And there we go. So, this is a power up that's going to fall out of bricks occasionally. And we don't want it to collide with balls or other bricks. We want it to fall through everything except our paddle, which means our paddle has to be on a special layer. So, by default, it's got a few built in layers. Default. Um, ignoring raycast layers, which is automatically used for various raycast effects. But here, what we want to do is have a special layer for our paddle and a special one for our power ups. And then we want to look at the physics. So, this is the collision matrix, and everything with a checkbox can collide with one another. Well, our power ups, we don't want it to collide with anything other than the paddle. And that's that. Now it'll pass through bricks, it'll pass through the balls, it'll pass through everything, except the paddle, it'll collide with that. And then at that point, we can have this power up, you know, destroy itself and then do something. Maybe it'll change the scaling of the paddle, make it wider, at least temporarily. Then you can set various timers to time out on that. Um, maybe it'll make your pallet sticky so that whenever the ball hits, it'll reattach itself to the paddle, which is very, very easy to do simply via the, uh, you already on your, um, you already have an on collision. So you could do something like, on collision, if power up sticky or magnet is enabled, then what you would do is you would basically do the inverse of the, the launch ball code, which is here. You would just set it to is kinematic equals true. And you would set attached ball. And at that point, the ball will be attached and it'll stick to your paddle and you can move it around and then you can hit space to launch it again. You know, little things like that, very cute kind of ideas. Um, this thing here, this power up, we're going to, it's just called capsule, but we're going to call it power up. And we're also going to make sure it's a prefab, just by dropping it down over here somewhere. And we're going to give it a rigid body, so it's affected by physics, mostly just for gravity. Rigid body, so now it's affected by gravity. And it'll fall down. It'll ignore everything except for, well, that's very interesting. Oh, you know, I actually have to give it the power up layer, and I have to give it the paddle. 
the paddle there. Like, why is it hitting things? It shouldn't be hitting anything. That's going to fall. You can see it actually fell right through the ball and hit the pallet. And because I have the, uh, the super bouncy... That's really cool. Um, the super bouncy physics material applied to everything by default, it's also super bouncy, but that, that shouldn't actually be an issue because in the on collision, um, and you can see this on collision doesn't check to see what the type of object is, and really what we want to do is set something up. So uh, we'd want to loop through, and if it's a ball that we're colliding with, then we're going to want to do this. If it's a power up that we're colliding with, we're going to want to use a different behavior, or possibly even better actually is just set a script. Yeah, we'd, we'd want to set a power up script, and when it has an on collide effect, power up script. Probably don't have to show you. I only have to keep talking, but what the heck? Let's do it. Let's go void on collision, enter, and then it's collision. And we'll want to do a variety of things. We we'll want to say, oh, did we collided with a paddle? Good paddle. You get this pop, up, uh, this power up. But more importantly, we're going to afterwards go and destroy our current game object, like so. And now when and we've forgotten to add the script because I always forget to add the script. Now when the power-up hits the paddle, it goes away. Boop! There you go. We've picked it up. And then you can play a sound, which you'll have to look up. You can you can spawn a whole bunch of little things with, uh, with some other physics that are on a completely different layer that don't interact with anything just to make this sort of shower of explosions. You could spawn a particle system temporarily to do the explosions. All kinds of things to make it kind of spiffy and exciting. Probably some sort of gooey thing that tells you what's going on. You could spawn a little gooey element that just sort of hovers up. Ooh, you've got, you know, you got laser beams, and then it fades out. Anything you want. I think this tutorial has shown you enough that you could easily get started in doing that. We've covered physics. The only thing we haven't really covered is the idea of moving the camera around. But the, the camera is just an object like anything else in the game. It would be very easy to move it simply by, by grabbing it and then tweaking the transform just like anything else. I think the camera can even be physics enabled. Uh, you can, and that's one thing we didn't do, is, um, is, is nest objects. But we could drag the camera over to our paddle. And now our paddle contains the main the main camera. The camera is a child of paddle. And now if we play the game, and we move the paddle around, you can see the camera is now locked to the paddle, which is a whole other interesting gaming mechanic. If you have any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to to post them uh, on the uh, on the videos. I will be happy to answer them. I'm usually pretty talkative, and also um, I'm probably going to be making more of these videos in the future. I know that I kind of kind of just ramble. It's a very casual style of doing things but I hope that uh, this sort of unstructured approach works for people. So if there's a specific mechanic you want me to explore and to explain how do you do X, let me know. I'm absolutely not a professional at this in any way whatsoever, um, but I've, I've fiddled a lot with it and I'd be happy to give a demonstration. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.